Call the meeting to order at 7.01. Anna, would you please read the Open Public Meetings Act? Advocate notice of this meeting has been provided by forwarding a copy to the Courier News Star Ledger and posting on the Township website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting, all in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. This meeting will not substantially go past 1030. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Kudo. Here. Mr. Donnelly. Here. Mr. Foster. Here. Mrs. Kingsley. Mrs. Pogue. Here. Mr. Varnerin. Here. Mayor Devani. I'm here. Would you all please rise for the flag salute? Okay, um, we had had a proclamation and unfortunately with the change of dates, our CASA representative uh, could not join us this evening. So we will uh, mail her that proclamation. It's always uh, nice to um, acknowledge the work that CASA does. Uh, moving into conference session, we're going to start with our 2023 municipal budget presentation. Uh, our CFO from HFA and our finance assistant advisor okay um are, are gonna start us off so if you gentlemen if you would just introduce yourselves and uh, we'll we'll get right into it then my name is anthony menino uh i am the chief financial officer through my firm holman for allison um gonna be doing the presentation along with my colleague chris clinton introduce himself hello i'm chris clinton uh, i'm a senior advisor at hfa and i'll be helping anthony with the presentation thank you gentlemen All right, um, so tonight we have the budget introduction. We're gonna go through um, some of the particulars related to the 2023 municipal budget. My mouse is going to work. So first up, we have the revenues for the current fund. Um, in the revenue section for the current fund, it's allocated into certain buckets according to state budget laws. So we're gonna go through what each of those buckets entails. First section, we have a surplus anticipated 2.78 million. Um, this is essentially utilizing our fund balance that we've had cash on hand that we've accrued over the years to balance out our budget. Uh, next section we have is our miscellaneous revenues, which is broken down into separate sub buckets. First, we have local revenues of 2,416,785. This 2.4 million is broken down into other sections uh, some of the specific sections that we have are, for example, uh, licenses that we issue, uh, alcohol license, uh, alcohol beverage licenses is one bucket, our fees and permits that we have is another section, uh, municipal court fines is located here also, any interest and cost on taxes that we have. Uh, interest on investments, cost of sewer treatment, those type of things, that's what are located in this 2.4 million number. Next up, we have state aid without offsetting appropriations of 1,631,603.21. So this section uh, is essentially our state aid. This section is kind of interesting because this year is the first time that it's actually had an increase in this bucket probably for the last 15 years, this number has been stagnant. Uh, this section, like I said, is a state aid that we receive, specifically our energy receipts tax. Energy receipts tax has stayed the same for the last 15 years because instead of giving municipalities increases, the state decided to keep any increases to fill their budget holes. This year, back in February, the governor uh, allowed a 0.07% increase for every municipality. That's the increase that every municipality got across the board. It's not like some got 1%, some got two, some got less. Every municipality got 0.07%. There was a local finance notice issued back in uh, early March that detailed that out. So last year we had 1,540,000 in energy receipts tax. This year we had 1,551,000. So we got a whopping $11,000 increase here, uh, but every penny counts. 
Additionally, in this section, we also have a reserve for municipal relief aid. Back in 2022, when the governor had kind of promised that he was going to start uh, increasing the energy receipts tax back to what it was supposed to be, the state actually started giving municipalities some of the money to kind of make them whole. So in 2022, we received $80,000 after the budget was adopted. So the state directed us that after, if you already adopted your budget, any money, if there were the municipal relief aid that you got, you had to anticipate in your 2023 budget. So $80,000 of this state aid line that we have is the reliever for municipal relief aid that we are budgeting here. Next section we have is dedicated uniform construction code fees offset with appropriations, 1,463,800. So this is our UCC fees. So any construction code fees that we collect, uh, permits that people come in with for their putting in a building, putting an add-on, things like that. This is where we budget and collect those fees. Next up, we have special items of general revenues anticipated with prior written incentive director, shared service agreements, $50,000. $50,000 specifically is related to Board of Education. Uh, 25,000 for vehicle maintenance and 25,000 for police, specifically the SLEOs, special law enforcement officers that we provide to the school district. Uh, we also have special items, uh, public and private revenues at 920,559.75. This is our grants that we have. So the grants that we have this year uh, 1600 for body armor grant, 70,000 for a union county infrastructure grant, 3200 for a NJ inclusive healthy communities grant, 3700 for a locals arts grant, 3290 for overlook medical center community advisory board grant, 3750 for a union county public art mural grant, 27,000 for American rescue plan firefighter grant, 2000 for a FM global fire prevention grant. 721,000 for an NJDEP REGDI Natural Climate Solutions Grant, and 85,000 for a local recreation improvement grant. Uh, so these are all grant monies that we have coming in that we'll be able to set up a grant account for and utilize those funds from the grants to pay for their respective uh, uh, purposes for the money to be allocated to. Next up, we have special items, general revenues anticipated, other, 2,057,000. So let's dig in to what the other is specifically citing. Uh, so here we have Uniform Fire Safety Act of 60,000. We have cable TV franchise fees of 172, uh, rents on township owned property of 300,000, uh, hotel tax of 245. We have police off duty administration fees of 37,000. Uh, the biggest section that is makes up the two million is the local fiscal recovery funds uh, that we have of six hundred ninety nine thousand. That's the American Rescue Plan money that we've collected that we've gotten over the two years through two tranches. Here we're budgeting it as revenue loss to offset general appropriations or general government operations. And then last up, we have a reserve for sale of municipal assets of one hundred and fifty four thousand. Uh, that being money that we've accrued over the years when we sold uh, excess surplus vehicles, uh, any equipment that we're not utilizing, we've sold off and we can now use that as a revenue to offset any type of appropriations. Specifically, what we're using the 155 for, I believe, is offsetting capital outlay appropriations for increase in the uh, equipment, infrastructure, those type of projects. Next up, we have receipts from delinquent taxes of 317,000. Um, so during the year, we have our taxes. We don't exactly collect all of our taxes. We have a taxes receivable at the end of the year. We're able to budget and realize the uh, revenue for the uncollected receivable balance that we have at the end of the year. So here we're budgeting for any balance that we didn't collect at the end of last year. Now, the good thing is municipalities are allowed to do a tax sale every year. So through the annual tax sale that we conduct, lien holders are able to purchase the um, unpaid balances and pay us the amount that's due and that in turn creates a lien on the property. So through the annual tax sale, uh, factoring out certain undesirable properties that are landlocked, that don't have access, that are determined to be unusable by people, um, the 317,000 through the tax sale 
is pretty sure to be, if not collected the entire thing, a little more. You can kind of see that from last year when we budgeted 317 and we collected 409. Next up, we have local tax for municipal purposes, including reserve for uncollected taxes, 14,804. So that is just our tax rate. Um, that's the local municipal purpose taxes that we have that we uh, collect for the taxes. Again, that is not including the county, that is not including the school district, that is not including the library that we'll get to in a minute. That is only a local municipal purpose. So now we have the library tax. Um, the library tax, 1,231,000. Uh, so this number is a number that comes directly from the state. The state calculates this and provides it to us. Uh, it's based on the net valuation taxable and other rateables that we have during the year, new construction, things that go on. So this number, we're told that we have to budget this. And if we don't, the state will come to us and tell us that we have to change it. So unfortunately, we have no control over the minimum library tax. Um, so in total, general revenues, 27, 673, 320.18. Next up, we'll go through appropriations for the current fund. So here uh, we have some buckets to go through also. Uh, first up, we have total general appropriation within caps, 18,090,000. So what makes up the 18,090,000 is our general department budgets. Uh, so every department is budgeted here, salary and wage, other expense. So this is where we'll find our DPW, our police, um, our finance, municipal clerk office, uh, our administration's office, mayor and council department. Um, any department that we have goes into this section inside cap. Now, the one thing to keep in mind too is our inside cap appropriations are limited. Uh, we are not able to just increase it whatever we want. There is an appropriation cap that we'll get to later that limits any increases in this line. Specifically, we're allowed a 2.5% increase in this line with an additional 1% with a COLA ordinance that we've done already. Um, so this line is limited to certain increases to a certain amount, which I'm happy to say we are in compliance. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here right now. We'd still be working on this. <laughs> um, so that's what makes up the 18 million nine. Uh, then we have our excluded, our outside cap appropriations. So the first section we have outside cap is other operations of 1,394,000. So specifically what makes up that 1,394,000. That's where our library is located. So in that 1,394,000, 1,231,000 of that is our minimum library tax. So our library tax on the revenue side has a direct offsetting appropriation side of the 1,231,000. The other two items that are located in this 1394 are tax appeal refunds of 125,000 and our low SAP plan of 37,500. So the tax appeal refunds are if residents come and appeal their taxes and happen to win their suit against us, this is where we're budgeting, stashing away money to essentially pay for those appeals. So that way we don't have to go into our own fund balance and dig a hole. We're budgeting that in preparation of those appeals. The LOSAP, uh, LOSAP standing for Length of Service Award Program, is volunteer firefighters. Um, any people that come in essentially risking their lives, that is us putting the money, money for a essentially incentive plan to go towards those volunteer uh, uh, volunteers, essentially, like I said, um, that we're putting away money into a plan. Next up, we have shared service agreement 605,454.24. What makes up that in total? First up, we have our sewer uh, with New Providence, 160,000. Uh, for New Providence, we also have court services of 118,000. Uh, County of Union, we have certified public works manager of 30,000. Uh, through Madison, we have IT for $27,000. Uh, also through the county, health services, $63,000. Uh, police dispatch, 911 through the county for $156,000. Uh, Board of Education, uh, similarly to how the revenues, we have appropriations here of $3,500 for the vehicle maintenance 
and 21,000 for the other expenses. Then through the Board of Education, we also have the Police Department of 25,000 for that SLEO I was talking about. And then through the Board of Education, GLTV of 1,500. So those are the shared service agreements that we have entered into. Uh, next up, we have our public and private programs offset by revenues, 990,000. Again, when I was talking about the grants and the revenue side, the grants have been matching and offsetting appropriations on the appropriation side. Uh, so this is where we have the grants on the appropriation side offsetting those revenues. So I won't go through the, uh, the grants again because I talked about those recently on the, the revenue side. So next up, we have capital improvements of 1,658,700. So some of the capital improvements that we have that we're talking about right now. 250,000 dollars of that is capital improvement fund. Capital improvement fund specifically is money that we put away for down payments on projects. Whenever we do an ordinance, um, bond ordinance specifically, we're required to have a five percent down payment um, and any debt that we authorize. So that down payment is coming from this capital improvement fund line of the 250. So um, so any capital ordinances, we don't have to have a down payment for, but like I said, bond ordinances, this is where we're budgeting that down payment money to authorize that debt. So some of the other items that we have in the capital section are capital outlay. Um, so one capital outlay line we have is traffic upgrades of 12,000, uh, road project drainage for 450,000, parasitic acid storage system of 500, gear acts of 8,500, police IT upgrades of 10, structural fire gear of 17,200, fire department radios of 27,000, uh, grit pump for 60, municipal drainage and road improvements for 200, and skid steer for 124. Next up, we have municipal debt service of 4,297,000. Um, this, is just what it sounds like. It's our principal and interest that we have to pay on our debt. Um, so here we have our bond principal and bond interest. Bond principal being 1,625,000. Interest on bonds being 1,676,000. Then we have payments of bond anticipation notes. So the bond anticipation notes are the temporary financing less than one year, um, not a calendar year, just less than 12 consecutive years. Uh, the payment of bond principal, 243000 Interest on notes, 342000 And then the last thing that's included in our debt is NJ infrastructure loan payable of 409000 That includes both our principal and our interest on our NJ iBank loan. Uh, last section that we have on the appropriation side, a reserve, reserve for uncollected taxes of 636000 so the reserve for uncollected taxes can be thought of as a bad debt expense, kind of. Um, we are the middleman, essentially, here. Um, we're collecting taxes not only for ourselves, for the library, we're collecting the taxes for the county, we're collecting taxes for the school district. But at the end of the year, we've not collected 100% of the taxes, as we can see with the receipts from delinquent taxes on the revenue side. So we're obligated to pay 100% of the tax rate of the school and the county over to the school and the county. So we're able to budget a reserve for uncollected taxes to essentially gross up our revenues for the amount um, that we're not collecting of our uh, taxes, but yet we still have to give over to the county and the school. So like I said, this is kind of a bad debt expense. So that way we don't have our fund balance earning in the negative for the amounts that we're not collecting, but still obligated to turn over. So next up, we'll talk about the capital budget and capital plan. So for the capital budget and capital plan, um, this is essentially a six-year uh, projection analysis that we're looking at. So municipalities under 10,000 population are required to do a three-year plan, municipalities over a 10,000 population are required to do a six-year plan. So because Berkeley Heights has over 10,000 population, we're going to go through a six-year plan that we're going to talk about right now. So the one thing to note is the capital budget capital plan that we're looking at is not set in stone. This can be amended. Well, municipalities routinely amend this capital budget and capital plan during the year. Needs change, things happen, 
couple years ago, Ida happened and completely obliterated anybody's plan in their capital budget and capital plan. Um, so the one thing to note too, is that in order to do the projects that we're gonna talk about for the most part, it's going to require an ordinance, either a capital ordinance or a bond ordinance that will require an introduction, um, an adoption. If it's a bond ordinance, there will be an estoppel period of 20 days also. So just to note that this is not set in stone, this can be changed. Um, by the mayor and council, and there will be times so where there will be further discussion discussions about the uh, um, projects that will be going on. Um, so some of the items that we're looking at right now, we've talked about already through some of the budget sections, um, but some of the other items that we have traffic upgrades, road improvements, um, parasitic acid, which I still don't really have a clue of parasitic acid. I, I don't think I want to, because it sounds painful. Uh, fire department gear racks, police department IT upgrades, uh, structural fire gear, radios, air pack cylinders, drainage, catch basin, sewer modernization program, our uh, project, uh, police vehicles, updated tax. So those are the projects that we have. So now the question is, how do we fund them? Um, so there are multiple ways to fund capital projects, capital outlay type. So some of the items, uh, particularly the ones that Berkeley Heights utilizes, uh, budget appropriations. So we saw in the budget, we had capital uh, improvement section. We had capital improvement fund and we had capital outlay. Uh, so the other items that we have is aggressively going after grants. Um, for the most part, grants could be considered as free money. Um, there is some legwork that involves in getting grants from employees, but it's usually cheaper and better to go for the grants. So some of the grants that Berkeley Heights has gone after successfully is Department of Transportation grants, Safe Trees to Transit, Safe Routes to Schools, Union County Infrastructure Trust grants, Union County Kids Recreation Trust grants. Additionally, um, some funding mechanisms that Berkeley Heights has utilized and continue to utilize, uh, New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Bank Loan Program, um, and then long-term bonds and short-term notes that we issue through the bond and note market. What does all of this mean to the people sitting behind me? Um, Cause that's what we're here to talk about. So for the average residential home in 2022, it was calculated at $315,842 and 43 cents. So what that means in local municipal purpose tax that was $2,479.36. Again, I preface that that is only the local municipal purpose. That is not everything. I'm only really talking about here what we can control or what you can control um, in this municipal budget. So only in local municipal purpose in 2022, the average home paid $2,479.36. In 2023, the average home increased to 316,742.39. So for that, the local municipal purpose comes to 2,547.41, which results in a $68.05 increase for the entire year. Now that $68 will then be broken out over four payments, uh, four quarters during the year. Uh, so what does that mean as far as tax rate? The 2022 local municipal tax rate was 0.785. Uh, so for every $100 of assessed value or every $100 that your home was worth or assessed at, you paid 78 cents. 2023, the local municipal purpose is 0 0.804. So for every $100 that your home was assessed at, you essentially paid 80 cents. So for the library now, the 2022 library rate, uh, zero, a 0 0.064 for every $100 of assessed valuation. In 2023, that comes to 0 0.067 for every $100 of assessed valuation. Question? So for 2023, it looks like the number went down, but you said it went up. Uh, for 316,742. It's less than 2022. 2022, it was 315,000. And then 23,316. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, got it. My mistake. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, bottom line, really. Um, so, this is the uh, library. So what we have here is showing the, essentially the tax impact over the years. 
Um, so here we just have historical data, really, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. So if we look at this, um, it shows you the gradual trends that we have over the years. So what we have here from 2022 to 2023, we're showing that what that $68.05 results in is a 2.74% tax increase from 2022 to 2023. So here we have a little bit of a pie chart, a little bit of a graphic to show you kind of where are your taxes going? When you pay your tax quarter bill every quarter, um, where, where are all my dollars going? Where are my pennies allocated? Um, so if you look at this chart, the orange section is the local school district. So honestly, routinely, most, if not every single municipality, the largest portion of your taxes usually goes to the school district. Um, then the next largest portion that we have, the dark blue, is the county. Then the next portion, which is the last portion, is us, the local uh, municipal government. The local municipal government, the light blue, can then be broken out even further into the second pie chart on the right. So the gray section that we have in the second pie chart is extracting the light blue into where, where our local municipal is allocated. So the gray is the local municipal purpose, and the yellow is showing the portion that's allocated to the, the uh, library. So next up, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the calculations that go into the budget. So the first thing we have is that reserve for uncollected taxes that I was talking about before. 2022, our tax collection was fairly strong um, in relation to other municipalities. Most municipalities that I've seen in 2022, they took a bit of a dip in their tax collections. Um, a lot of municipalities ended up in the 98 percentages. Um, so Berkeley Heights being at 99.42 is a very strong collection percentage. Uh, so 2022 tax collection was 99.42. For the 2023 budget expectation, we expect the same thing. So when calculating our rough percentage, we utilize the 99.42 again. So next up, another calculation that goes into our appropriation cap and our tax levy cap is a certification of new construction. So in 2022, during the year, there was new construction of $3,738,000. Um, so at the prior 2022 local municipal rate of 0.785, that resulted in $29,343.30 of new additional rateables. The 29,000 was never included in the 2022 budget. So that is essentially additional rateables that we were able to gain in 23 budget because the new construction happened after the budget was adopted. So the two caps that I was talking about, the appropriation and tax levy cap just before, we'll go through that a little bit. So the appropriation cap that we have, um, NJSA 48-4-452, in case anybody just gets bored while laying in bed tonight and wants to read some budget law, it's a really good read. I recommend it to everyone. Uh, unfortunately, it was created in 1977, so slightly outdated and old, but why not go through it? Um, so what we have here is our maximum allowable appropriations within CAPS. The maximum we're allowed to go to is 18214277264 The actual appropriations within CAPS that we have in this current draft budget, 18,090,353.50. So what that tells us is in this budget, uh, we are banking in our appropriation cap 123,924.14, essentially the difference between the maximum amount that we're allowed to budget and the actual amount that we have. So we could have legally had $123,000 more of appropriations are inside cap, but through uh, seeing what was acceptable to the residents, um, it was not needed really at this time. So the other cap law that we have is the tax levy cap. Um, so a little newer here, 2010, so we're not as old as 1977 um, or dated. So here, our maximum allowable per, uh, amount to be raised by taxation, 16370000 Our actual amount to be raised by taxation in current draft budget, 14, 804. So our 2023 anticipated cap bank that we're going to be banking is 1565878864 
So our 2022 cap bank that we had 2,189,000 in 2021, we banked 416,000 in 2020, we banked 397,000. Um, now, the thing to keep in mind with these cap banks is these cap banks can only be used up to a certain number of years. So if you don't use it, you essentially lose it. Um, so there was no reason to use the 2020 cap bank. It was not needed. We did not need to exceed the legal limit of the tax levy cap. So the 397000 that you see from 2020 will be expiring this year, and we won't need to be using that. So what does the bottom line tell us here? Um, the 2023 average tax impact for municipal taxes only, um, based on the average residential home of 316,742.39, results in a $68.05 or a 2.74% increase over 2022. Um, so again, like I said before, the 68.05 could be thought easier for residents as $34, um, Um, why is that? So you can think of the $68 and five cents as terms, as far as how people see the bill and see it, um, affecting them. $17 would be every quarter that they would pay additional. Um, so if anyone has any questions, we're going to, to talk about just want to, before we have any additional questions or questions from the public, I just want to thank the council president and councilwoman Kingsley and everybody on the council for working really hard. I know there were multiple meetings and back and forth and a lot of discussion. This budget does not come uh, together very easily. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it by the governing body and administration, Liza and Anna and everybody involved. So just want to thank the council uh, first and foremost and HFA for preparing a what I think is a really solid budget. So thank you all. Anybody on the governing body, though, you probably lived it, dreamt about it, rolled around in it. Any questions about rolled the budget? It, yeah. <laughs> Lots of rolling around in it. This Shredded it. <laughs> Shredded it. <laughs> Wanted to light it on fire every now and then. Um, Angie. Oh. Yes. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, I just think before we open it up to the public, it might be helpful to just go over any headcount additions that we have in the budget, because that's usually a question. Do not have that handy, Anthony. Do you have that handy additional or Liza may kind of know off the top of her head, actually? Not a lot. Uh, the head, the additional head count. I don't think one and a half bot, uh, staff people, one new police officer, one half in the finance office, and a half of half of a part time, we say half, that doesn't sound right, right? A part time person in the uh, construction office. Yeah, we're having a really difficult time finding people to apply for the vacancies as it is. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jane. That was a, a good uh, point to bring out. All right. With that, if the governing body doesn't have any additional questions, I always like to open up conference session to the residents if they have any questions. Um, just try to follow our normal protocols, name, address, try to keep it to a few minutes. Um, we have Anthony, you don't have to move. Well, do we have another microphone? We, we need you guys to stay put and answer the questions. <laughs> You're our area experts here. And borrow Anna's microphone, I suppose, if we... Anybody wants to come forward and ask any additional questions. Obviously, there'll be another opportunity at the official hearing, um, which is scheduled for May 23rd, and that's the official public hearing on the budget. But if if a resident had a question specific to what Chris and Anthony um, laid out very nicely tonight, please feel May 9th. I'm sorry, May 9th. Manny's giving me bad information. Bad answer. So now he's confusing me. Now he's trying to make me look bad. No, he's May 23rd. 23rd. I had a little panic attack there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, May 9th. Uh, Definitely May 23rd. Final answer, everyone. The final adoption of the budget is May 23rd. Yes. May 9th is you can be ordinances, yeah. but 23rd is the. I'm going to stop listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Even... Yeah. Yeah. Definitely can blame it on that, right? 
All right, very good. If there, John, do you have a question? Come on up. <clears throat> Johnson Cagley at 22 Robbins Avenue. Um, the presentation, I felt like I was at a lecture uh, in terms of statistics and so forth. I think what's more important, however, and, and again, no you know, aspirations in terms of what you did, I don't think that was your role. I think you wanted to talk about you know, how we got there, what the numbers are, cap and so forth. Um, the question that Gene just, which we just answered about headcounts, I think it's important, and I'd like to hear, is what's different, okay? All right, we're talking about another police officer, a couple of part-time people. What else is happening that's different, either more or less? I know things are going to cost more. I know salaries are going up, the benefits and so forth. Um, that, to me, is something the public needs to hear as opposed to, well, we have this much in the cap and this is, you know, I do want to know it's set at $68 more. That's fine, but I want to know why. So if, if some people could, could provide some information about that as to what initiatives are happening this year that causes it to be different up or down. So I, I, I'll let you, I'll, I'll start and then you guys can fill in some of the details. So first and foremost, we're spending a whole lot more capital on the sewer plan than we typically do. We typically only borrow about $2 million um, as per our financial advisor's recommendation back in 2019, I think it was when we brought her on, that we kind of just only borrow what's rolling off. And that's primarily been smaller drainage projects, roads, et cetera. Um, but this year, because of the needs of the sewer plant, um, we're probably borrowing about $10 million more than we want. So that's a big um, definite change uh, that the public should be aware of. I think operating um, pretty much is, is what you would typically expect. Pensions go up. Uh, salaries go up. Um, there are some issues that are related to inflation, maybe some supplies at the sewer plant. Liability insurance, I think, went up by 200,000 or somewhere in that neighborhood. So that that's, that's it was in the middle of 100 to 200,000. I don't know exact. Yeah, it was under two. It was it was it was much more over 100. Probably, I thought in the neighborhood of 200. So that was a big op substantial operating change. But I think the biggest part of the budget, though, we did try to take out of, you know, use the current fund, fund balance, surplus, that kind of thing. The biggest change is the $10 million in capital needs. And that it's truly a need. I mean, it's an emergent situation there. Okay. Uh, just as a follow-up to that, I know that that previous meeting, um, you know, some of the department heads had things to say. I mean, what's happening in terms of extra things, perhaps a rescue squad for the police department, for the fire department, uh, and DPW equipment or anything like that? Um, I was actually not present at that meeting. I'm trying to find my little. I can't answer that, Mayor. Yeah, could you not, please? Yeah. I mean, I know generally. So, and I just want to correct myself because I don't want anybody to come away with bad information. Um, the budget is actually um filling three new full time positions. One at DPW again, which may not be needed. Um, one police officer and a full time construction worker. We now have a part time construction. Um administrative officer in the budget. So it's one part-time finance person in our finance office and three full-time positions. So what has changed? I can tell you what's changed. Um, our, our finance office is the smallest office of a town this size anywhere our auditors ever been to. Uh, our town now has 14,000 people and our staff is smaller than it was years ago when the population was much less. Um, we have Due to the dedication of our small staff, um, our employees do the work of three in many other towns. So this is to provide some relief because we just can't operate uh, like this anymore. So by the way, uh, I think they do a great job. They do. And, you know, because they love this town are really actually really fortunate that we have a great um, a great roster of employees on um, the construction office. We currently only have one full time person there, many in that office. So when they're out, we've we've had to shut the office down. Um, however, we are going to be cross-training them so that they have experience in construction, engineering, and planning. So there's never go not going to be someone in that office who can take care of a question that might touch all of those different divisions. Um, and the PD, I know the police uh, chief sent a memo to council. Um, we have one traffic officer right now for a growing town this size, and our traffic is a number one concern. Um, so I know he could use some help, but our chief did send to council some statistics 
um, that show we are far under the ratio of police officers to population right now. Okay. What about okay. equipment and supplies? Okay, I, I have that list. So I'm going to try to go down the list. I don't have, I'm going to give you what's been approved. In a, gen in a general sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah let me. Are we, are we buying an, another police car? Are we buying another fire piece of apparatus? I, I have the list. Okay. All right. So police department, two vehicles um, were approved. IT upgrades for 10,000 traffic enforcement signboard. The alcohol, alco test machine, is that correct? Okay. Um, the drone, so that's for the police department. In the DPW, it's the lot, the DPW lot in the back. Um, dirt removal from the yard. The skid steer was approved. The catch basin repair. Stream cleaning. And then let me go on to the other two departments. Give me a minute, please. Um, the regular co-op that we do, the co-op road pit, that's not the reconstruction, so the resurfacing for $1.25 million. Um, the DOT match that we get, so we usually get a substantial um, grant from the state, and that's going to um, pave Orchard Mercier area for $463,000, so the match to that was approved. Union County Infrastructure, we always put in the match for that every year. That's usually... Um, well, this year it's 140,000. We usually get about 60 to 70,000 from the county as, a, as, as the matching grant. Um, the municipal aid, we usually get about 400,000. So we put in for 400,000. So that's like the next project, reconstruction project. Miscellaneous drainage, because we have drainage issues everywhere for 200,000. Safe routes, so we have, to, we have to come up with the delta of what the grant doesn't cover. So that's 760,000. Uh, the bikeway grant that we got was in, announced back in December, so we have to put in another three hundred and thirty-four thousand to make that project go. Just to correct Angie, those—that's actually the grant money that we're getting. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, okay. Yeah, you're reading the wrong column, but yeah. Which column should I? Am I to the well, right? Well, that's because there's there's three columns how we fund, and the, those big dollars are funded from the grant. We've got much smaller numbers that we're. Okay. Okay. So, John, let me. I'm I think what I'm reading is the middle, but let me confirm that. So there's a there's a, I think, there's a handwritten note here. It says. Is that current fund, the middle column? Yeah, grant. No, 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 I see that. There's current fund, the capital and then there's outlay. grants. Right, and then there's, yeah. Yes. Okay. Is this Liza's handwriting? Yes. yes. And you know, I can put this up on the website tomorrow, John. Literally, you j yeah. just, if you see right. the copy we're looking at, it's not going to make sense at all. Um, so yes, and these items that the mayor was listing off, some are a combination of being funded through the New Jersey Infrastructure Bank, which is how we're planning to fund uh, all of our sewer projects as one big sewer modernization project. Um, that's zero to low interest financing based on a certain payback schedule. Um, regular ordinance, which is borrowing money, um, and then capital outlay, which is using the money we have on hand to pay for things. So that's what is enabling us to actually do more without having the taxpayers feel as much of that effect because we're trying to borrow as little as possible. So I can put this list. Can I just say one other thing we forgot with the operating is we took out the rescue squads um, funding for their radios and their ambulance. And that's now being given and given to the rescue squad via the operating budget because we don't own the assets. So therefore we can't borrow <laughs> for them, but they are getting them. Funded in the operating budget, right? right. Last comment, just that, that and I, I appreciate that, Liza, that I just think that we know things are gonna cost more. Okay, I think it's important to let people know, okay, this budget's gonna do this, 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 and this. Okay, yes, pensions are more, salaries are more, benefits are more, we know that. But let's, what are we getting for our money? And, and, and basically, I think, so people understand where their dollars are going. And, you know, I think you've done a pretty good job um, I don't know all the details yet, but uh, you know, one other question: um, Did we ever use any cap bank in the, in the past three or four years? I don't think so. The only thing I've seen last year there was no cap bank used. Um, honestly, based on the amounts that are sitting in the cap banks from prior years, it looks like no. There, we haven't. In twenty twenty, I don't think, I didn't, we I didn't were, think we're, so. we're not using cap bank this year. No. Either, right? Okay. All right. Surplus when we, yeah, even in 2020. So we were in a good position. Fair point. We'll get more detail up on the website, John. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? All right. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your time this evening. All right. We have two other conference session issues related to the police department and to proposals.
just ordinances. Um, if Lieutenant Gaffney and Corporal Kochi could come forward and give us a broad overview of those two ordinances, we would appreciate it. Good evening, Lieutenant Gaffney, Sports Services. I'm with my uh, overworked traffic officer, Corporal Croce. We're gonna go over a couple of proposals that were brought to us by other departments. Uh, well, the one was from the rec department about the park, putting no parking signs on your side down by uh, is it Benjamin and on Hamilton Avenue. So the problem they're having is people are parking on both sides of this tiny road. So every time someone wants to leave or come in, they're going head on on people. And just to orient to uh, folks, this is um, on your way, heading on your way down to Lower Columbia where the middle school is. There's the parking lot that supports the playground and, and the school, but we're actually talking about the opposite side near the tennis courts where the stream and the swim club are. That that roadway, that small roadway there, that's dead ended, correct? Yeah. Right, so the south side of there, there's actually a ditch also. So people parking there and walking out. Um, if they were exiting their vehicles, on the wrong side there, they could actually fall and trip that, that ditch there. So it's definitely a safety issue. And if you guys can look at the map right there and put any questions, we can try to help you out. This came from the rec department to us. And we saw there is an issue there and we work closely with them and everyone else in the town. So, so the, the, the proposal is uh, the ordinance wouldn't allow parking all the way down the Hamilton Avenue, there's, whether it's um, the top or at the bottom near the tennis. I'll let a couple quotes you fill you guys in, but there's also a proposal coming. I don't know if it's already out there or not to have a little parking lot down there. And if we were not to put those no parking signs in, we would not be able to get out of that parking lot. Yeah, it's tight. Down by tennis courts and swim clubs, pushing those dead ends. So, um, we're proposing to put no parking on the south side and then further down Hamilton Avenue on both sides on the north and south side. So, currently, um, when there's a large event for Lower Columbia or any of the recreation um, games at Columbia, there's parking on both sides. And I've witnessed just that cars are pretty much driving head on to the tennis court. To avoid an issue, we'd like to make um, no parking on both sides, north and south of the tennis court. We're really looking to try to avoid problems with that. This is a sensible proposal. Does anyone have any specific questions or concerns? Or? We can't one. hear anything, by the way. Whatever Danny just said, we couldn't hear it on the mic. Okay. Um, sorry, how about, how about now? Now we can, thanks. Okay. I'll start over. Um, Thank you. So on the north side of the parking lot near the pickleball courts, we're looking to put uh, no parkings on the south side. Um, supposedly in the near future, the rec department is going to pave that lot and, and also stripe it. So if cars are parked along the south side of Hamilton Avenue down by the tennis courts, it's very difficult for, um, it will be very difficult for vehicles to pull in and out of those parking spaces. So currently we have uh, temporary no parking signs. So we're looking to put a permanent no parking sign uh, along the south side of the Hamilton Avenue. And then on the uh, upper portion closer to Plainfield Avenue on the north and south side, we're looking to put no parking signs on both sides because when there's a large event uh, at Columbia School or any of the games or any of the activities that are taking place on Hamilton Avenue, uh, vehicles are parked there and traffic moving in and out um, is an issue with vehicles driving head on to each other. So we're looking to post uh, no parking signs on the north and south bound signs. And were you able to hear that? Yeah. So just let me, I want to just clarify. So you can park on the north side once you make the turn into uh, the Columbia like playground parking lot. The, the, that spots in front of the tennis courts, you'll be allowed to park on the right side, just not on the left side, correct? Yes, uh, currently what they're looking to do right now, there's a gravel 
parking lot. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. In the future, they're going to pave it and add additional parking. So okay. there will be parking down on the, yes, the northbound side by the tennis courts will be, they will be able to park. All right, thanks. Any other questions? <clears throat> I got one. The, the entrance to Columbia, the parking lot there, no need to put anything there because I know sometimes people say, well, there's no sign here. I can park here. I know it's not wide enough, but I don't think there's ever been an issue, but is there anything with that? Maybe just what, to like- Where are you referring to? The, the Columbia parking. Going into the school. Going into the school parking lot, yeah. I believe that's that's school property and I believe there is no parking sign. Okay. In this regard, <laughs> thank you. Safety issue is brought up by the rec department. Do you guys endorse it? Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. All right. Yeah, there's another. Uh, the second is the. Oh, this the uh, safe space, uh, internet based transaction parking area, right? So this was um, a program that's uh, been used from several uh, towns within Union County. Uh, we're just looking to um, pretty much, we currently have um, people that are internet purchases and exchanges within township property uh, with the new building and the parking lot and uh, the cameras that we have available. We've chosen a spot within the municipal complex and the police department lot that is um, under 24 hour surveillance by uh, about two or three cameras. So if somebody were to purchase something online or anything like that, um, we would have, you know, have it on record that if something were to go wrong or somebody would get hurt, we have documentation. And it's also going to help us out with uh, custody exchanges for um, parents that, have, or that are separated. So uh, it's just, you know, pretty much a courtesy that we're extending to our residents to know that this area is monitored if they, you know, may feel a little unsafe. It's just something that we're offering to them um, through through the township. This seems to be spreading. Yes, throughout uh, the state. There's okay. um, two, that's six towns uh, in the in Union County that are uh, already doing it, and I believe there's about another three or four that are going through the same process we're going through. It's becoming fairly common to have the police department as a meetup spot if you're doing transaction online within the state. Also, not where is the uh, spot that you would use? Um, it's out the uh, police entrance as you're making the left into the police lot, kind of on the corner. And um, like I said, there's two or three cameras. I could show you, it's hard to describe it. Um, it's on the west side of the building. Yep. We can't hear, we can't hear again. All right, I'm sorry, I'm not used to the That's microphone. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's behind that, it's like along the fence line and it's in the corner. and. It's we felt that was the best spot to get the you know covered cameras. Corporal, I have a question. Um, so it's transfer item, items that are legal only, which of course I understand. So I'm wondering why not cars? I know you know I privately sold an old car. I was just curious because it's a legal transfer. So I was just curious. That was the uh, the town attorneys. We didn't actually get involved in driving or the ordinance itself as far as that. So there was there's a reason in there for that. So if the town wants to change that. You're allowed to. We're okay. We're just signing off on what was proposed to us. Did you just base this on a on a model of what towns typically do, and they don't typically include car sales, or that, that's correct? Okay. Do you know if there was a driving reason why other towns haven't done this? Is it just more onerous? Is there causes more problems? I don't know. Oil Take title has the address yeah. anyway, so it's not like you're hiding the address there. The space can be marked and remarked. Sorry, the uh, striping in the parking lot for the spaces will remain the same. It's just a uh, 12 by 18 sign that's going to say Internet Safe Exchange with uh, by order, you know, Berkeley Heights Police with our logo. That's all. Right. Okay. Subject to that real life. No, I mean, if that's, um, if there's a concern of people checking out cars and getting under the hood, I mean, I, you know, it just, I know I sold a car privately, Junker, and I was a little uncomfortable with them coming to my house. So I was just curious about that. It's a personal anecdotal question. It's up to you. Does anybody feel strongly to include or exclude or? I have no problem. I have no problem either way. 
All right. Do you want to include it, Susan? I mean, I think, I, yeah, yeah, we got some feedback from the audience. Um, I would like to. I mean, people are selling old cars, and I'm not comfortable with anyone coming to my house these days, frankly. So I just want to make sure that we're only going to have one spot. Just because it's like you, you've got the car you're selling and the car people are you got a multiple multiple people around. I just want to make sure we're not you how many you know I just it, it's really only one spot we're dedicating right because if you have cars there's multiple cars involved in the transaction we'll, we'll only have one spot now you know it'll, Fine. It happens to be a spot next to it that the person that's selling the car or buying the car parks in right. they'll both be on camera but there will be only one designated, designated space. space right right that's why it's called an area too when a lot of towns have it that way <laughs> yeah cover the whole this makes good common sense if we don't I do this wanna... people are going to make the transactions anyway but i think if we allow people to know hey we're here we're going to monitor and you can use this lot that's here it's the town benefits and i think it's great because people are selling a lot of things yeah. privately <laughs> through whatever, whatever the things are there's a lot of them now right and you do right. hear some horror stories of things going bad even in even in union county Want to take I, I, as well, or just sorry, Alex, say that again. Want to allow uh, private exchange of motor vehicles? Do you also want to allow weapons from that? Say no. I think I think no. we draw the line at weapons, right? I, I think, right, everyone. Yeah. I think that's kind of a. I don't want to get into that. I just didn't know if we we're going to delete the entire section or just. Motor vehicles. I think we're just going to include motor vehicles and everything else. From what I'm hearing, we we're going to go ahead and keep out of the ordinance. Are in agreement with that, no weapons. I mean, <laughs> can't imagine you guys would support that, but I have to check. Can I just ask a question again? I just want to confirm again where the spot is we're designating. Is this over? It's not where the police dispatch door is, right? It's the other parking lot where the police entrance is. The police vehicles are. When you refer to police entrance, you mean the side door or the or the or the main? The, not the door that's facing Park Avenue, but the door that faces the DPW. No, it will be the door facing Park Avenue in the corner. So see, what my only concern with picking that spot is when we have senior meetings and library meetings, whatever, there's so few spots that are close to the front door that all of like our seniors are using all of these. And I'm concerned about tying up a spot that's so close to the doors that it's, you know, we, we, we don't have enough. Go ahead, I'm sorry. We just, we don't have enough spots close enough to the building and we've already got two designated for Purple Hearts and and not enough not enough um, um, handicap. I'm just worried to take up more of those front spots for things that our seniors that are actively using the building won't be able to use. So the, these, this, I'd rather push it away. This area will be, is gonna be, sign will be there, but it's not actually enforceable where we can write someone a, a ticket so they have to move. So during the day, obviously, somebody would know, wow, this, this parking lot is packed today. This, this transaction is not going to work. Or they would use a further end of the, the parking lot that's usually empty. We do have cameras there, too. But this is just no, but my worry is our seniors are the rule followers, so they will be afraid to park in that spot. Right, we can address them. We'll go talk to them. Maybe we can cover yeah. it during the days that we have senior yeah. meetings. We you know, put a bag on the sign so they don't see it. Or just maybe, it's, yeah, I just want people to know they can still park there because you guys know what it's like on Mondays and Tuesdays. Mondays and bingo. And lunches and, yeah. Yeah, are we here to bingo? We know. <laughs> Feel the pain, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? Any other comments? Good feedback? All right. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Appreciate it. No weapons. <clears throat> Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. I thought you were happy, and so I didn't have to ask anybody from the public to come forward. He's got a weapon. <laughs> he wants to sell weapons. He wants to get into the weapon selling. Getting. Well, getting. well, given timing when this appeared as an ordinance and it wasn't tabled yet, I you know, spoke to this issue, and I don't have to go back and talk about the various things I pose about motor vehicles because it's nice to just sit back and watch things happen. Um, I talked to the lieutenant last week on a new, a noon in the sunshine and was sharing some of the things I, I, I was telling you. But I also went back to the ordinance as a whole, and this is more from an ordinance writing perspective. You know, when <clears throat> we called it the internet safe exchange zone, as I tried to operationalize what people would be doing, I got the exchange and I talked about paperwork and some handing over checks and you know, internet-based and things like that. I think, well, why was 
Are we supplying the Wi-Fi for people to make internet transactions? And then think about it more. It was like, oh, somebody may buy something on the internet, but you have to physically come together. And but I would I would be cautious in in perhaps naming the ordinance, you know, with internet in it because it's more of like a you know um, goods exchange or I'm not going to come up with a name, but it's like the internet makes it more like it might be because when you do meet, you might do a financial exchange on your phone and pay with you know Venmo or PayPal or something like that. But somebody may write a check. You think it's more like a safe, and, you know, safe, safe exchange zone? zone? Yeah, it's a safe it's internet, safe, safe payment. Um, like I, said, I didn't come with a, a name in mind, but I was just trying to figure out what the you know what was implied by using the internet term. And it's usually how people find these objects because you're not in a brick and mortar place. So I see where that would come from, but I forget right. That. And like I said, I had to think about the many ways that could be interpreted, but a monitored exchange. Or any, I tell you, communication is everything in taking the great intent that comes with this and, and implementing it. And you know, everything has to be explained. But oh, and then and then the other part of it is when you think about a parking space. And I think we covered it with, you know, there's, if you're in the area of the cameras, that's the important thing. But I was saying, you know, what's, what's with the parking space? Well, the first person who shows up, if it's rainy or cold or hot, they all can go in one car and, you know, do their exchange in the course of the 15 minutes. And, and so I was, you know, because as I think we've alluded to, people are going to show up, you know, you have, it takes two to do the exchange. So people are going to uh, show up in a couple of cars and they're not calling for more parking spaces. What are they going to do in that parking space? Well, I think that's what Lieutenant Gaffney was saying. It's sort of an area. An area, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's. So one space will be marked, I guess. You know, because like on, on on a nice day, like when we're when we we're chatting the other day, it's like we'll just kind of sit in the area and you know, yeah, do our exchange because it won't be in the middle of traffic. It'll be as good as the sidewalk. I think. Hopefully, so. it'd be uh, during off hours, maybe more likely but, than not. So number seven does say each use limited to fifteen minutes per transaction. Uh, not beneath, beneath 16 minutes. Maybe that's what it's, it's a max, I guess. Um, transaction, I don't know, transaction safe zone or something. Anyway, you, I think you, I, you know, you got, I think you got the, the message I was, I was giving on the, on, on the general purposes. As you go back and you, you can think about all this language and when you introduce it. So, <laughs> making me cough. What do they call it in other towns? They all have the same name? So there's something to also be said. There's something also to be said about a uniform name that everybody recognizes and understands. That this is what this is, right? Hi, Nancy Imbles on a two one five Killarney Drive. I think it's a great idea. Safe transfer zone. Just make it really simple. I think with his point when he first started saying, I was like, who cares? But it makes sense, especially if you're talking about transfer of people. They were over talking about this anyway, but. I think there's an easier way to say it at the top level that will make people not confused. And if you say zone and not parking space, you don't get away from the parking space issue. So something to think about. <laughs> Good feedback. Personally, I think Thank anyone you. making a transaction off of Instagram, Facebook, or whatever, they know what the internet exchange is. Like, it's already, if it's already universal with other six other towns. Something to be said about that. We're open. You can change it to whatever you want to name it. Right. Not a Hold on. Yeah. Act, not for parking. I second that. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant Gaffney and Corporal Pochi. Thanks, guys. We had a no idling thing on the sign. I'm not sure. Alex, you can use recommendation. You might have some so far. All right, we're going to move on to the regular agenda. And we can hold them in. I make a motion to approve uh, the minutes of the public meeting, February 21st, 2023, March 2nd, 2023, March 21st, 2023. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kudo. Aye. Mr. Donnelly. Mr. Foster. Yes. Mrs. Kingsley. Yes. Mrs. Pogue. Yes. Mr. Varnery. Yes. Um, we have an introduction of an ordinance. Anna, can you read the ordinance, please? 
calendar year 2023 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank. Um, whereas the local government cap law NJSA 40A colon 4-45.1 uh, provides that the perfect, I'm supposed to read the whole thing. I'm supposed to read the whole thing. Guns <laughs> out, Mike. All right. Um, we're gonna the public hearing and the final adoption is gonna be scheduled for May twenty third, twenty twenty. Second. Any any discussion? We'll call, please. Mr. Kudo. Yes. Mrs. Donnelly. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. Mrs. Kingsley. Yes. Mrs. Pogue. Yes. Mr. Varnery. Yes. I have the hard part. Introduction of the 2023 budget. Be it resolved that the following statements of revenue and appropriation shall constitute the municipal budget for the year 2023. The governing body of the Township of Berkeley Heights does hereby approve the following as the budget for the year 2023. Revenues, surplus anticipated, $2,650,000. Miscellaneous revenues, $7,7842.11. Received from delinquent taxes, $317,000. Thousand dollars, <throat> local tax for municipal slash library purposes sixteen million thirty four thousand two hundred sixty eight dollars and thirty five cents for a total of twenty six million seven hundred two thousand one hundred ten dollars and forty six cents. Appropriations, appropriations within caps eighteen million ninety thousand three hundred fifty three dollars and fifty cents. Appropriations excluded from caps six million nine hundred seventeen thousand dollars three hundred twenty. $917,329.99, reserved for uncollected taxes, $1,694,426.97, for a total of $26,702,110.46. Be it further resolved that the budget is published by the summary in the Courier News on April 28, 2023, and in compliance with NJSA 40A colon 4-8, 1A, a copy of the full approved budget will be available for public inspection at the office of the township clerk located in the Berkeley Heights Municipal Complex, 29 Park Avenue Township website and township website www.berkeleyheights.gov. Notice is hereby given that the budget and tax resolution was approved by the governing body of the township of Berkeley Heights County of Union on April 24th, 2023. A hearing on the budget and tax resolution will be held at the municipal building on May 23rd, 2023 at 7 o'clock p.m. in which time and place objections to the budget and tax resolution for the year 2023 may be present, presented by taxpayers or other interested persons. I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mayor. One second, please. Um, so I just, just quickly before we get into this, <clears throat> I did notice that the salt dome shared service revenue wasn't in the budget. So I think we, we resolved it and they. Hello, Chris Clinton speaking. Um, we discussed it, uh, when we were reviewing our revenues, it was actually a revenue that was never received. So it's something we're actually researching now. And it was confirmed with the AFS from Sorello that it was not received last year. So it's right now sitting as a receivable. And then whenever we do receive it and then receive the funds for this year, we can put it down as a chapter 159 and include it into the budget. Okay, so we need to make sure we're billing the county for this, this term is the bottom line. All right, thank you, Chris, I appreciate that. So no changes in the way, we'll just take it in when we receive it and we need to be mindful that we need to bill. Yeah, the budget is sitting as it is. And then once it does get received, we do the chapter 159 to include it. Perfect, okay, very good, thank you. Appreciate it, Chris and Anthony. Um, did I get a second? Second. All right, any, any discussion, any other discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Kudo. Yes. Mr. Donnelly. Mr. Foster. Yes. Mrs. Kingsley. Yes. Mrs. Pogue. Yes. Mr. Varnery. Yes. And I'll move to open the um, hearing on agenda items only. A second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kudo. Yes. Mr. Donnelly. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. Mrs. Kingsley. Yes. Mrs. Pogue. Yes. Mr. Varnery. Yes. Comments are welcome during the public comment period during this meeting or on any agenda item. However, if an ordinance is listed for its own public hearing on the agenda, 
please hold your comments for that particular public hearing. To make your comment, a speaker must come forward to the microphone and state his or her name and address for the record. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. The mayor council president will keep time. Please promptly yield on the floor when time is called and return to your seat. Your cooperation and adherence to these rules of order will ensure an orderly and respectful meeting. Alternatively, written comments may also be submitted in lieu of verbal comments. You may also submit written comments in advance of the meeting, either via electronic mail to amincoff at bhtwp.com or written letter to Township Clerk 29 Park Avenue, Berkeley Heights, New Jersey 07922, including commenter's phone name and address, which must be received by the Township Clerk by 4 p.m. on the date of the meeting. With that, the hearing on the agenda items only is now open. It looks like there's <clears throat> someone wishing to speak. We're gonna uh, make a move to close the hearing on the agenda items only. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Cudo. Mr. Zanelli. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. Mrs. Kingsley. Yes. Mrs. Pogue. Yes. Mr. Varnering. Yes. Actually, Jean, you're not here, so you, I'll, uh, I move uh, resolution one for Jean. Uh, res I move resolution one approving bill list dated April 24th, 2023, in the amount of $499,817.40. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kudo. Mr. Donnelly. Mr. Foster. Yes. Mrs. Kingsley. Yes. Mrs. Pogue. Yes. Mr. Varnery. Yes. I move resolution number two, authorizing the application of the 2023 New Jersey American Water Environmental Grant Program for stormwater infrastructure maps in the amount of $25,000. Second. Um, the title just needs to be updated. It's a minor change. We were using a previous result. It's um the program is the through the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. So it would, the title would be... Um, Resolution authorizing the application of the 2023 New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection um, Stormwater Grant Program. Not New Jersey American Water. All the rest is fine. Modified. I move. Susan, do you want to move it as mod as? Yeah, um, I'm going to move to modify um, Indiana. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kudo? Aye. Mr. Donnelly? Mr. Foster? Yes. Mrs. Kingsley? Yes. Mrs. Pogue? Yes. Mr. Varnering? Yes. Um, I move on resolution three, authorizing a side letter of agreement promotions with the Township's Department of Public Works. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kudo? Yes. Mrs. Donnelly? Mr. Foster? Yes. Mrs. Kingsley? Yes. Mrs. Pogue? Yes. Mr. Varnering? Yes. Move resolution number four, resolution supporting the green team in their efforts to renew the township's silver certification. Hmm. Is that a second? Yep. Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kudo? Yes. Mr. Donnelly? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Mrs. Kingsley? Yes. Mrs. Pogue? Yes. Mr. Varnering? Yes. Seems I'm ordinance guy tonight. <laughs> and if you would treat the ordinance, please. An ordinance amending the minimum and maximum rate of salary and compensation of elected and appointed township officials and non-union employees in the various municipal departments of the township of Berkeley Heights. I move that the ordinance is read by the clerk be offered for the first reading uh, and scheduled oh, for uh, today, the, the date, first reading, and the, the, the date May 9th be set as the date for public hearing and that the clerk be directed to advertise the same at the current hearing. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kudo? Aye. Mrs. Donnelly? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Mrs. Kingsley? Yes. Mrs. Pogue? Yes. Mr. Varnerin? Yes. Not here, so I'm going to move to open the council reports and I start off with. No, oh, sorry. That was me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Manny, <laughs> Township <laughs> Council. I know. I know. I realized that. Okay. Sorry. You're up first. Okay. Um, I'm just going to give the council report on the downtown beautification uh, April report. It's spring, so DBC is turning its attention to two programs it runs yearly to bring beautiful flowers and greenery to town. These are the fill a basket and adopt a sign programs. First, the fill a basket program is open for sponsorship. We have 14 baskets on Springfield Avenue mounted on poles to fill with flowers. Each year, local businesses and neighborhood groups step up to sponsor the basket. 
This year, the cost of sponsorship is $200. Paul's Garden Center staff plants the baskets, and the good folks at DPW install and water them. In the past, Berkeley Heights Business and Civic has co-sponsored this program and has promoted it through its meetings and emails. Uh, please get in touch with me or the DBC via email at dbc at bhtwp.com if you're interested in a sponsorship. Secondly, with May fast approaching, it's adopt a sign season. Girl Scout troops, local families, and businesses adopt more than 20 welcome and park signs. They wipe down the signs, plant flowers and, and greens, and keep them weeded for the season. It's a fun, not too demanding way to get involved in volunteering for the town. If you're interested, please get in touch with me again or reach out to DBC via email at dbc at bhtwp.com. The, the EDC is going to meet on this Friday, and we'll report back on that meeting next week. And uh, that'll be it for me. Great. Thank you so much, Manny. Paul? Uh, so there's not much to report on the grants, but they're um, just getting the paperwork together to send to Union County to start getting reimbursed for the work done at Latell Lord. Um, town has over 100,000 in grant funding to get reimbursed for county grants. And that's for me. Bye -bye. Thank you, Paul. Good information. John? Okay, the Historic Preservation Committee met on uh, 412, and we spoke about the house signs for the uh, century-old houses. Um, we also talked about a possible scavenger hunt on June 3rd and June 4th. Uh, we opened up the house uh, the same day as the PBA fishing derby, which uh, so was looked like it was pretty well attended. I drove past it, um, and I sort of I didn't get a chance to stop in the house, but uh, it seemed like everything was going well over there. Um, so we had possibly had some people walking in, checking out the Latell Lord House. Um, the next meeting is going to be on May fourth, um, on April twenty second. The Governor Livingston Highlander Band. Paraded in the Mountainside Baseball Parade, and uh, it was it was it was pretty awesome. The band sounded great. Um, Four twenty six is Administrative Professionals Day, so uh, all you administrative professionals out there, I uh, thank you very much for helping out. On uh, four twenty nine, Anything Floral is going to be celebrating its thirtieth year in business in Berkeley Heights. So come on down and celebrate. They're going to have a little uh, shindig going on between twelve and two. Um, May 1st is first day of Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. It begins. So I'm sure we'll be working on getting a flag raising going on at a town hall. Um, and then our next council meeting is uh, May 9th. So come on and stop in. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much, John. Jean? Okay. Uh, the planning board met on Wednesday, April 19th um, to hear a uh, request for signage approval at 310 Snyder Avenue, which is the extra storage. Um, after a lengthy discussion between the board and the applicant, the signage was approved um, with some stipulated changes to a proposed monument sign to make sure that it would conform with the township's existing Part 5 requirements. Um, in terms of downtown beautification, as Manny stated, we met on April 17th. In addition to the items he discussed, uh, the committee had a long conversation on how to um, assist in highlighting the longevity of businesses downtown. So it is going to focus on businesses who are reaching an anniversary milestone ending in the number zero, meaning 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60. Um, and they want to enhance not just the proclamation process, which has been historically given to businesses from the mayor and council, but in addition, they're going to design a, a, a sticker that uh, would highlight the year and the businesses could put in their windows. Um, we're going to use the experience Berkeley Heights platform um, and social media uh, for longstanding businesses. They'll produce a short little video featuring an interview with the owner and the representatives of the businesses and a little highlight on background on how long they've been in business. Um, the database that DBC has has almost 150 businesses in town, which is a surprising number. Uh, we have reached out to the Economic Development Committee to make sure we combine our lists and we don't miss anyone, so stay tuned. Um, the Senior Affairs Committee is meeting this Wednesday at April 29th. Um, and just wanted to note that last Friday, the Rec Department had a beautiful homemade spring luncheon. We had, I think, 85 seniors in our community show up. It's really inspiring. You have to come down and see. Um, it's really the mix has gotten broad. They're just having such a great time with fellowship and community. So I want to give a big thank you to the rec department and their volunteers that are willing to put these luncheons on for our seniors. And that's it. Great. Thank you so much, Jean. Susan? Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to give a shout out to the Environmental Commission for hosting the tree giveaway event on the Earth Day celebration. For those of you that know me, every day is Earth Day, not just one day a year. And everyone can do something to help our planet. I know I appreciate the work done by this group of dedicated volunteers. So two easy ways for anyone to make a difference. Be mindful. Don't idle your vehicles. It takes less gas to start a car than to idle for three minutes. 
Turning off engines helps reduce emissions into the air as well as saves you money at the gas station. And number two, please remember dandelions are the pollinators first. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you, Susan. Jeff? I'll keep it for tonight. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Oh, you said no report. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, 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 administration reports. I don't have a whole lot to report either. I just want to uh, congratulate the Berkeley Heights PAL on a great parade and uh, opening day for baseball, softball. The PBA did a great job with the fishing derby. A lot of a lot of kids are out there fishing, catching a lot of great fishes. I know that uh, Liza's children are out there. And I just want to say congratulations to Howie Meyer, who's celebrating 50 years of service on the Berkeley Heights Volunteer Rescue Squad. We're going to have him come back in and give him the proclamation again because uh, his wife, Sue, wanted to do that one more time. And Michelle Young, who was uh, awarded the Volunteer of the Year for the Berkeley Heights Rescue Squad. And that concludes my report. Eliza. Uh, <clears throat> I just have one remark, and that is, thank God, that the budget is almost done. Um, <laughs> we do learn how to improve the process a little bit every year. I mean, at least since I've been here. So I, I do want to say that the feedback we get from the people who who pay attention to what's going on in their municipal government and come up and give us suggestions, it's always helpful because we try to be as transparent and open with communication as possible. But when you're in the weeds in it, you sort of forget to give like a broader overview that some people may be looking for. So please continue to um, send in construction, constructive um, criticism and suggestions for how we can improve the process, especially in terms of how we convey the budget and the process to the residents. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Liz. I appreciate that. Before we close out, I just have one question for John. So the scavenger hunt, you said, was uh, June 3rd and 4th? In this uh, that's that's a tentative date, yeah. Okay, the 4th is the street fair, so I was wondering if you were like... And there's a pickleball tournament that weekend, too. Looks like we're scratching the scavenger. <laughs> Maybe the weekend before <laughs> would be better. Yeah, okay. So just so you know, in case yeah, it becomes an issue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, can you accept the township report? Make a motion to accept the Township Council report. Second that. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Kudo? Yes. Mrs. Amelie? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Mrs. Kingsley? Yes. Mrs. Pogue? Yes. Mr. Varnery? Yes. I move to open the citizens' hearing. Second that. Oops. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Kudo? Yes. Mrs. Amelie? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Mrs. Kingsley? Yes. Mrs. Pogue? Yes. Mr. Varnery? Yes. Okay, the citizens hearing is now open with the same rules in effect that I read out earlier this evening. <clears throat> Tom Michewski, 40 Ralph Place. Pest test. Sorry, I got here a little bit late. What's our total bonding um, and capital expenditures? Like how much are we doing this year? Exact number, I put all my stuff here. Roughly twelve million. Um, We're doing twelve million this year. Well, there's there's two sort of separate venues. One is through the I Bank, where we package a lot of our sewer projects as part of the sewer modernization. Um, project that we're doing to get zero to low interest financing through there, and then there's regular ordinance borrowing. So on on the um, on our budget sheets, there's two categories. So I just want to point that out. So do you want total? And I don't know. If Angie Hester is ready, but I can give you. It looks like probably have it. Total is about is nine point three five million for iBank, New Jersey iBank, and then let me scroll down. I'm gonna post this tomorrow on the web. Yes, yes, yes. It's just not in a format that anybody wants to, to look at right now. I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> oh, you want to post it on the website? No, I'm no. And then a uh, little over two million in Close regular. Regular ordinance, regular just. How much was in regular ordinance? Uh, just over two million. Two o o three. Um, also, the I just wanted for clarification for the uh, what was the impact? We had this discussion many times, and I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it. What's the impact of the municipal building? Um, since we had no pilots, and to get to that minus three dollars where the building builds itself. You needed to apply all of the revenue from the pilots towards that number. Since we had no pilot in, in uh, revenue, how much uh, so far has the the residents paid into this municipal building uh, since we started paying into it to date? 
So I don't have that number handy, but at our next meeting, so simultaneously with this budget process that's happening tonight, um, we're having our financial advisor from NW Financial put together all our, our debt forecast and a presentation that will be at the next meeting, I believe. So that includes all of the all of the money that's supposed to be coming in for pilots, which this is the first year that we're starting to collect for those pilots. I understand, but we've had some money. So just for the and you know this is that in the past we were told this building would basically build itself. It would it actually produce three dollars a household to build. Um, from what I understand, we're close to or over forty million dollars on this build, building. Maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, um, but whatever the case is, we're making payments to this, and I just kind of want to get an understand of what this has cost the taxpayers to date. Um, to just so I, I get my time in. Oh, so can uh, can you can I get that number next for next? Get it, meeting? Heather. Can I have it at the financial meeting. advisor, Heather. We can have her or the meeting. next meeting. It, it's it's fine. We can discuss it. She's is she here the twenty third or the ninth? Done this twenty times. It's whatever the next meeting is. Okay, so she's here the for ninth. the ninth. We'll have it for the ninth. Okay. Um, the I'm just trying to get all my questions in with my time, but uh, why is the the library tax up? It it seems like four percent. Is there like a reason that that's up so much? It seems like they're in this building. That's statutory. To go up four percent. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know the formula, but it's not controlled by us. Is my point, I guess. So, but that we'll find out. Okay. And. One more question. Oh, on just this uh, this tax levied pie chart, I'm really not over, <laughs> not a huge fan of this. But um, the one point that I wanted to make is that uh, with the pilots, zero dollars are going into our schools. Um, however, from my understanding, is all of the tax revenues uh, from the town actually go into the municipal coffers, and then we pay the schools. Is that correct? Okay, so when the school, the school always will always get its money. So uh, even though the pilots, all these deals with the, the pilots and the uh, developers will pay nothing, they're only paying whatever the 20 cents on a dollar that they, they're paying or 40 cents on a dollar that they're paying, um, that the school, the, we're going to still have to pay out the schools and that still comes from the municipal thing. So if the school budget does go up, um, we'll obviously collect more, but um, th they won't be paying anything into into that as as, as uh, at all. Pilot, yeah, yeah. The pilot definitely does not pay. It's five percent toward to the county, and the other ninety five percent goes to the uh, municipality. But what I'm saying is, it everything actually technically comes into the municipality, and then we pay out, and then you have to pay out. pay out. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you. Eve Carlos, 35 Sycamore Avenue. Forgot to add that part last time. Um, two things, giving a little time to think about it after that discussion, the safe purchase exchange zone. Um, and then the, the, the question on the resolution about, you know, um, authorizing the success of the green team in its endeavors. I noticed in the agenda, there's also um, an attachment, which was nice, that lists people in the different, <clears throat> excuse me, areas, you know, like from the Environmental Commission, from the Township, from the Planning and Zoning Boards that make up that team. So now I know who they are, so that's great. And it says proposed 2023 uh, team members. Um, it wasn't clear that the resolution authorized them to make them the real green team members. Is there a, um, is there a, a way that the green team becomes an official green team as opposed to the proposed? Are we done deciding who's on the green team? That kind of thing. I don't know. I may have to do it by executive order. I'm not sure I'd have to ask Barbara. Executive order is sufficient. So it's not proposed. <laughs> I was looking at the language of the resolution and it kind of authorized efforts, but not the creation of a team. So I was just kind of wondering about that. And I figured it might be connected because of things that proposed, but it wasn't clear to me that that resolution um, named them. So just 
take that as input if you want to make things official, if it really matters on this thing. So. Else wishing to speak this evening? Close the citizens hearing. Second it. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Do not have an executive session this evening, so I will ask for a motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion to. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Have a good evening. Enjoy the hockey game and wherever the your final destination takes you this evening.